Hey, hello guys, this is Karthik from executeautomation.com. This is part 9 of our framework design and development video series. In this part, we are going to talk about TestNG, one of the greatest framework most used, most commonly used across many people as like JUnit. But TestNG has a lot of powers and that's the one which we're going to discuss in this part. So before proceeding this part, I would request you to watch part 5, 6 and 7 since this part is going to fully depend on those parts. Okay. So what is TestNG really is? TestNG is a testing framework designed to run unit testings. It is more like JUnit and NUnit, but has some features as shown in the below screenshot. So these are the features. It has annotations. It runs your test in arbitrary big thread pools with various policies available. Test that your code is multi-thread safe so that you can run the same thread in multiple machines at the same time. Flexible test configurations are available. That's actually the testng.xml file. So we'll talk more about that while we jump into that. And it supports data-driven testing using at data provider. So if we use this particular attribute, we can also do the data-driven testing using this particular ad. It has support for parameters. It's powerful execution model, right? So actually the full article of TestNG is available in my website again in executeautomation.com. So just try to go to these URLs as you can see here. If you can't really remember this URL, of course you can't. So just go to executeautomation.com and search for TestNG. You will get these two links, right? So let's jump into our Eclipse and see how to configure the TestNG and see how we can work with TestNG. So I'm going to Eclipse, all right? So this is the same project which are going to work again. All right. So as you can see so far in our uh, video tutorial, we were just trying to run a full test using this particular main method. But what if tomorrow my test has got two operations to be performed? You know, searching for a text and then performing the clicking operation of download link and going to the home page, which we did so far in this particular method in a separate method. So all I'm trying to establish here is to write two different methods to perform the full operation which is written here. In order for that to be done, we can use a test ng. So here, let me first add the reference for test ng. So first we need to download the test ng of course. So I'm going to my Google search and we'll search for test ng. Okay, so this is the TestNG website and there's a download. So this is the plugin for your Eclipse. So you, you need to add a reference to your Eclipse so that your Eclipse will have this TestNG plugin added. I think I have already added my plugin for TestNG. So it's there already. We're going to start the TestNG newly. You can directly go to the marketplace or install new software here. And then just copy paste this uh, URL and hit the add and give something like test ng and just hit OK. So this will go and search for the plugin. So as you can see here, the plugin will be located and you can download it and install it. All right. And then I'm going to add a class here. So instead of Google search just on Java, right now I'm going to go with a new test ng class file so that's going to be a completely new uh, class file instead of using the actual java class file i'm going to use the test ng class file here so which is available in this particular test ng there is a test ng class so i'm going to add that and as you can see here this particular wizard turns out to be a completely different stuff because right now because in earlier class files you might have seen it will have a package and it will have just a class name and it will ask for the public static void main or include the abstract classes etc but here it's bringing up the class name of course as like uh, the one which we had even in the in the classical java class file but it has some more annotations options here as you can see here it has before method uh, at before class at before test at before suit and at after class and something other than that okay so i'm going to call this class name as my test caller 
and this will there is an option called XML suit file so as of now I'm just going to leave this and I'm going to hit finish oops oh my god it has added to org.org so I'm going to just drag it and drop it right here all right and I'm going to delete this package and also okay that's gone the test caller has there is an annotation called at test for this particular method so there is no main method in this particular class I'm going to change this to let's say test method one all right and then I'm going to call this this out and test method one all right and then let's copy paste this I'm gonna call this guy as test method two and I'm gonna change this value as test method two all right so the normal Java class file how do we execute this we can right click it go to the runners and hit this Java application which will execute this particular code but in order to run the test ng class file we should do right click again here run us but instead of java application we have something called as test ng test so this is what we need to do right so if i hit this this will run the test for me and as you can see the console output is completely different it's saying test ng running and then it shows me up a method like test method one and test method two and it also says passed so this test method one and test method two is the output which we actually provided here using the system run order print right it throws me out the passed result as both the test has got passed and also it says the default test and also default suit and it says total number of test run is two and zero zero and skips are zero all right so what else does this test ng does for me so right now there is no folder called test ng so if I refresh this project you can see there is a new folder generated called test output so if I go to this output you can see there is a whole lot of files automatically created for me using test ng so if I go to this index.html and if I try to navigate or browse this particular file there is something called open with web browser so if I hit this you can see there is a test results of one suit and it says this is the XML file and this is the one test which it executed and it has zero groups number of times and the render output the ignored method etc so if I hit this show this will show me the past results and if I go to this one test, this will show me the default test one class. So if I click this XML file, this will show me an XML file which is automatically generated. So if I hit this test method, right now since we have no operation being performed in each this method other than just printing out them, it has shown only this particular output. But if we have more operation performed then this will show you even a graphical reports so let me close this so this is how this test ng is actually executing the test right so how does this test is being executed using test ng how does this test ng knows that these are the two methods available for this particular class and i need to execute these two methods it's because did i hit this run us as test ng test what if my test methods are available in some other different test classes of test ng does that execute of course yes if you configure them in a xml file called test ng.xml so this test ng.xml is actually available in your temporary folder while you run that so if you see the file which is generated if I open this web page, you can see there is a temp folder which is automatically created by TestNG. If I navigate to that path, all right, and then there is something called TestNG Eclipse. So if I go here, TestNG Eclipse folder is created, and there is an XML file. 
So if I open this XML file using Notepad++, there is a suit which is default suit and automatically it has created a default test and there is a classes tag and within the classes tag there is a class tag and it says org.pom.testcaller. So I think this is somewhere we have seen in our Eclipse. So if I go to the Eclipse right here, this test caller is available in the package org.pom.testcaller. Same thing is mentioned here. So I'm running this particular class file. So I'm running the full class itself, right? So if I want to specify a method to be executed explicitly, then even I can specify the method name here. So in order for that to be done, let me go to the testng website. And if I go to the documentation here, you can see the whole documentation of how this testng can be controlled, executed, each and every method, etc. So here there is a tag called methods and within this methods I have one more tag called includes and that has a name for the method so let's copy this and let's paste this in my XML file right here and then I'm going to paste the method name here and then I'm going to close this class right here slash class all right I'm going to save this but instead of saving this in my temporary folder, I'm going to save this in my project itself. So let's go to my Eclipse and let's create a new XML file and let's call this as testng.xml and hit finish. I'm going to open this with text editor and I'm going to just copy paste this XML data as it is. All right. And then I'm going to close this XML. So as you can see right now, the XML has been completely rendered for us. All right. So instead of name test method, I'm going to give my actual method name. So my actual method name is test method one. So I'm going to paste this here. But I'm not going to run the test method two right now. I just want to run test method one. Then in order for that to be done, just right click this XML file and run as testng suit. If I run this, this will just run only one test which is specified in the XML file which is test method 1. If I want to run the test method 2, then don't hesitate to change this method name to test method 2. Just save it and then if you run this test method, this test suit right now, you will see that it will only dis display the test method 2. So that's the actual power of testng. You have the full control of which method to be executed and which method not to be executed. And there is something called include and there is something called exclude. You can also specify the method name. So here right now it is include. If I add a tag called exclude, then that method alone will not be executed. So if I say that, okay, hey, I don't want to run this test method one, exclude this method. And if I run this test right now, you will not see the method test method one here because we have excluded that. If you try to include that, that method will also execute. So if I include this and if I run this test, you can see that that particular method will also be executed. So these two methods are executed here and it is running from D colon a different space in a different path altogether that's the power of testng.xml so that's it guys this is the uh, basic introduction of our testng.xml and testng itself so in the next video we are going to write a custom library for testng.xml and what we're going to do there is we're going to read the method names from the excel sheet and then we are going to render that into an testng.xml and then we're going to run that xml using java directly instead of right clicking and running the testng suit and then we're going to run the whole test directly we manually creating a xml file right here we're just going to specify the method name in the excel sheet and then we're going to run it from there and that will run the whole test for us whatever video parts we have seen so far are the bits and pieces of developing a framework so that 
while we start to develop a full framework these bits and pieces will come handy and will be plugged into to make an actual working framework right thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day